Basically, uh, this session aims to teach and educate about the basics of container security layers, which are uh, C groups, namespaces, AppArmor, SecComp, and capabilities. Uh, this, this talk won't be a super technical uh, talk, but we do wanna, but I do wanna speak about how do they work and about the strange cases when you need to run your applications, your containers uh, with additional privileges and the solution for this, uh, the, the general solution, the common one is to run it is privileged uh, and this actually uh, is really common but it's not a secure use case because running con containers as privileged can uh, pose a big risk. So we're gonna talk about that and about what we can do in order to avoid such situations, but uh, also grant the additional uh, privileges to our container. So let's start with an introduction. Uh, my name is Aviv Sasson. Uh, as you can see in here, I'm a proud dog owner. Uh, I'm a principal security researcher with Prisma Cloud and Unit 42 at Palo Alto Networks. Uh, mainly my job is to support the uh, security efforts for the product and in addition I'm part of our initiative to uh, contribute to the security of the cloud ecosystem and we're doing this by uh, looking for vulnerabilities for zero days um, in the ecosystem. We, we report them and make sure that they are patched. Uh, and this way customers are uh, happy and secure. So let's start with the agenda for today. So I know this is container con, con and I guess most of you have a, a decent knowledge about containers, but I still want everyone to be aligned. So we do a really, really quick brief about containers. Then we'll continue to containers limitations, uh, what you can and cannot run inside your container. And then we'll go to the solution to run privileged container. And we'll talk about why this is not the best solution in most cases, for example, in production environments. And then we'll talk about the better solution, what we should do. And the better solution is to configure strict uh, security policies for all of the layers we're going to talk about today, which are capabilities, SecComp, AppArmor, Cgroups, and namespaces. So in this way, we can grant our container only the additional access privilege instead of just writing it as privilege and give it all of the permissions uh, that is, are possible. And after that, we go to the takeaways, which will be uh, more practical. So let's start with containers. So you all know containers. Uh, they are great. They are, based, they are uh, an operation system virtualization technology used to package applications and dependencies. Uh, you can put it in images, they're super portable, you can use Kubernetes for scalability, and it's, they are really efficient, unlike virtual machines uh, that have their own kernels, container have shared the same kernel as the, the host, and there's only one kernel uh, for each host and all of the containers, so there's no overhead uh, of many kernels like virtual machines. And containers also provide additional layer of security. So basically, containers provide uh, isolation. And I know you see uh, all, of the, all of the words in here, like namespaces and cgroups, and we'll dive deep into them uh, later on the slide. So this is just a brief. And I just want to say that the isolation is done by namespaces, and each container, as you know, uh, is not aware uh, of other containers on the host. So in case the container is compromised, then uh, the attacker inside the container won't be able to expand his grip uh, to the host or to other containers. Now, other than, uh, than isolation, uh, containers have limited resources. And when I say resources, I mean uh, CPUs and memory and stuff like this. So this limitation, those limitations are done by C-groups. And the third one is that containers actually run with low privileges. And this is because if we run them with high privileges, then they will be able to escape the container and compromise um, all of the containers in the same host and the host itself. So the mechanisms that uh, enforce those low privileges or capabilities, SecComp and AppArmor. Now you might be asking yourself, so does containers have limited functionalities? And they actually, the answer is yes, uh, in general, in the default policy. 
So for example, if you want to uh, mount or load or unload kernel module, uh, you'll get blocked because containers doesn't have that privilege. If you want to load or unload EBF programs, if you want to uh, do some IP tables operation or syslog operations, you won't be able to do so. And you might be saying to yourself, all right, so containers uh, really aren't meant to do such heavy lifting uh, operation. And that's actually true. But there are some cases when your containers, your applications, uh, will need those privileges. So for example, if, you are have, if you're running a monitoring or security tool, so this container, this application, would need a lot of privileges in order to inspect the environment. And if you want to run it, uh, you'll get blocked by default. If you want to, for another example, uh, run an advanced networking tools, again, you'll be blocked. If you want to direct hardware to the direct hardware access, not possible. And for example, the strange case of Docker in Docker, which is actually running a Docker daemon inside a Docker container, um, you also won't be able to do so. so Let's talk about what we can do in such cases when we need our container to have additional privileges. And the first and simple solution is to run it in privilege mode. So for those of you who doesn't know what is privilege mode, it's basically a mode to run the container in which disables all of the security layers. So basically, you have uh, full privileges, privileges as the host of the, the host of the same privileges as the as root on the host machine. Uh, there is still isolation over there because you are inside a container, but this isolation can be broken uh, fairly easily. And the main risk in privilege container is that the container will break out. And just to illustrate uh, how to do so and the fact that it is really uh, easy and easy to do. So for one example, you can just mount the host file system. This is possible if you run a privileged container. After that, you can add a user to your host and then connect through SSH with that user and the password. You could also add uh, an SSH key and connect. Or you can just create a cron job that will be executed as root on the host. And the attackers will be able, be able to execute any code that they want. And in addition, if the attackers even want to go uh, ballistics on this one, and they don't want to run as root, but they rather run in the context of the kernel, they can just load the kernel module uh, and execute their code over there. Now, uh, after the attackers are breaking out of the containers, they'll be able to access other containers and the host machine. And from that, depending on other policies uh, from the orchestrator or uh, DevOps, uh, other configurations, uh, the attackers might be able to do some other stuff. For example, take over the whole environment, um, interact with other nodes, and, and uh, manipulate some data. So we do want to keep this boundary of containers in order to keep uh, risk as minimum as possible. Now, the point of this talk is not run privileged container, but run it, run your containers with additional privileges. So in order to do so, because we have to, the, the best practice is to configure uh, strict security policies that grant the minimum privileges required. Now, I know this is kind of vague, and that's why we're going to dive deeper into what this actually means. Now, the first thing we need to know, we need to understand, is what are actually those container security layers, we need to understand what they do, how they work, uh, what are the policies, how they look like, and how can we modify them. And after we gain this knowledge, we can start working. And the first thing we need to know is we need to determine the minimum required uh, privileges for applications. So for example, uh, if we have an advanced networking tool that we need to know that, for example, you need, need to have the CapNet admin uh, capability. So we need to profile it in order to know what we want to grant. And then we just need to configure it uh, and apply it to our container. Now, this might sound easy. Uh, it's not that easy. And that's why I'm here, to teach you how to do it. So let's start with uh, container security layers. 
and what they are. Let's start first with capabilities, the first one. So in the past, uh, when you ran a process, it could ra run in two modes. The first is privilege, which actually means that it runs in the context of root, and the second one is unprivileged. And this poses kind of a risk because, for example, if I'm running a uh, a process that only needs to do some raw socket operations, there is no reason that it will be able to mount or load kernel modules or anything else. I just wanted to do some uh, raw socket operations. And in the past, I couldn't grant, it, grant my process uh, this uh, permission without just granting everything. So if it got compromised, uh, I'm in, b in big risk. And that's why in the present we have capabilities, which is basically uh, a Linux kernel feature that takes uh, the privilege, the, the, when I say privilege again, it means running uh, as root, and they just divided all of the privileges of that mode into uh, small uh, byte pieces. And for example, we have uh, capsis truth, and in order to allow your process to run truth, you don't need now now you don't need to, um, to run it as root. You can just give it caps as truth. And if it got compromised, the only thing that this process will be able to do is truth. So basically, it's just fine grain uh, uh, privilege management, uh, which is great. And of course, Docker and containers in general use this mechanism uh, to enforce security. And as you can see in here, this is the uh, default capabilities for Docker, uh, as you can see, there are a lot of capabilities in here. Uh, but again, but sorry, but there are many other capabilities that are not in here, and Docker uh, did remove from the default policy. So let's talk about what we can do if we want to uh, add a capability to our container. And this is the first one, so it's kind of easy. And Docker allow you to uh, to just use the flag cap add. So for example, we can use Docker run cap add capnet admin, and then give give our container uh, the additional capability that we require. And this is great; it works perfectly fine. Uh, but if you want to go ballistics on this one and enforce maximum security, uh, then you could profile your application understand what are the minimum uh, required capabilities. And when I say minimum required, I mean like uh, a subset of the default. Um, st uh, so it's like less than the default one and accept, and of course, like for example, capnet admin, and then grant it to your container. And this way you will maximize uh, your security. Uh, for example, one example of how to do so is using the tool AA Genproof which actually uh, is part of the AppArmor uh, App suit. Uh, so this tool is used for profiling applications. It does it dynamically, and it yields uh, AppArmor profiles that includes capabilities. So for example, here you can see uh, that I profiled ping, and the capability uh, that I got from uh, App a Genproof is CapNet Row. Now, I just want to emphasize uh, the point that if you're going to profile your application, you need to do it in the right way, and you need to trigger all of the functionalities of your application, your container, so that a Genproof will be able to collect all of the uh, privileges of the capabilities that you need. So for example, if we have a web server with an endpoint that uh, uh, mounts, then if we're not going to trigger this endpoint, a genproof wouldn't know that your uh, application needs the, the, need the cap uh, sysadmin, which is used for mounting. And when you uh, deploy your application with the policy, then everything will break when someone access this endpoint. So this is one, something I wanted to emphasize. And if you want to use this methodology of, methodology of work, what you should do is just run docker run, uh, cap drop, all, which means you drop all of the capabilities, and then you use cap add, which will, which will add the capabilities that you'll need. And this way, you'll have the minimum required capabilities. All right, second one. Let's go over to second. Now, 
Seccomp is a secure computing mode. It's also a Linux feature, Linux kernel feature. And basically what it does is it blocks the execution of syscall. So when you execute a syscall, before the, the, the execution itself, it goes through the seccomp mechanism in the kernel, and seccomp decides if the process is allowed to execute the syscall or if whether it's not allowed to execute the syscall. And this one is a great uh, a security layer because other than blocking than block some syscalls that you should not be able to use, it also helps minimize attack vector in other ways. So for example, um, if there are some uh, kernel vulnerabilities in uh, some syscalls that you're not aware of, then it is possible that SecComp will block you from using uh, those syscalls uh, by default because you don't need to use them and then attackers won't be able to exploit them. And another point I want to emphasize is that it disables by default the unshare and set an S um, syscall, which we're not going to dive deep into this one, but they allow you to change your process namespace. And if you change to another user namespace, then you'll be able to gain all of the capabilities uh, you want. So in this way, you can bypass the capabilities layer. But if you have seccomp and disable unshare and set an S, then you won't be able to do so. So let's go over to Docker default second profile. So as you can see, uh, it's, a, it's a whitelist for syscalls. Uh, here you can see uh, a part of the profile. And Docker say that they disable around 44 syscalls out of 300. Um, if you want to go deeper on this one, you can check the link down below and see the uh, default profile. So that's how it looks like. And you might be saying to yourself, all right, so I, I run some containers. That's what I do. And I use the cap add, for example, and put uh, cap sys truth in there. And second didn't block me. I was able to do so. And the reason for that is that Docker default second profile is more sophisticated than this. And it has some paragraphs, uh, some sections over there that saying, for example, on this one, if the container starts with uh, caps is truth, then we're going to allow truth. So basically, if you run your, your container in Docker and use cap add, uh, then you'll be able to bypass the capability security layer and the second security layer and execute those syscalls that are relevant to the capability. But um, the, the default configuration is great. It's really good. But there are some cases when it could be a little bit more uh, permissive. So for example, if we start our container and give it capsys admin, then we'll be able to execute all of those syscalls in here. And there are, uh, there are more syscalls that are not in this presentation because uh, I haven't had enough space to put it on. But if I want to, for example, just be able to run set hostname, then I'll grant capsys admin. And other than be able to be able to set hosting. I'll be able to do anything I want. For example, set an S. So we talked about this. It's not, this is not a good one. So this is kind of permissive uh, and can lead so, to some uh, security uh, risks. So let's talk about what we can do and what is the recommendation. And the recommendation is that if you have a, a, an application that needs additional privileges, you need to just give it the uh, minimum required uh, access permission. So um, the recommendation, the easy one, is to just take the Docker default second profile and remove the excessive syscalls. So for example, uh, if we want to, be, if we want to uh, use set hostname, then we ju should just take the default second and remove all of those syscalls over here. And then when we'll run uh, caped Capsys admin, then we'll have the capability, but we will only be able to run set hostname and not stuff like uh, setNS. All right. And again, if you want to go ballistics on this one for maximum security, then you should profile your application and create a custom profile. Uh, one example of profiling could be uh, just run S trace minus C. So in, in this example, you can see that I ran uh, S trace minus C LS, and I got all of the syscalls that my application needed, LS in this case. 
And again, I want to emphasize this. If you want to profile your application, you need to make sure that you trigger all of the functionalities so that the policy will include everything you need and not just some part of it. So when you put it in production, it will be able to operate and not break. Now, uh, if you want to use your custom uh, second profile, you could do it by just uh, executing Docker run, security up second, and then the path to your profile. All right, let's go to the third layer, which is AppArmor. So AppArmor is a Linux kernel security module. It's a great module, and it allows you to do a lot of things uh, and restrict, restrict operations in a lot of ways. So for example, it allows you to restrict uh, capabilities, file access, uh, networking, and much, much more. Uh, in essence, basically, it is a whitelist profile, but if you take a look at the default Docker app on profile, you, you'll see a blacklist and not a whitelist. And the reason for that is that in the beginning uh, of the, that profile, Docker allows you to do a lot of things. And after that, they just exclude the more uh, dangerous stuff. So you'll be able to execute a lot of functionalities, but not be able to execute dangerous ones. So if you want to go uh, and check out the profile, you can go and see the, the model project over there in the link down below and see the full uh, Apparel profile that comes by default. Now let's talk about recommendation. So the recommendation is to configure an Apparel profile for each container that need additional privileges uh, with only uh, the required access privileges. I know I said it a lot of time, the minimum required access privileges, and it's because there have been so many talks, talkings about privileged container, but still, until this day, people are running the container and as privileged, and this pose so many risks, as we talked about before. So that's why I'm emphasizing this point. Um, so the easy way, the recommendation of how to do so is just take the uh, default Docker app arm profile and just add the uh, access requirements. That's how you can do it uh, more easily. And if you want to go full ballistics on this one, you can profile your application and run it uh, with the uh, policy that you generated. And this can be done by AA genproofs, uh, genproof, as uh, we talked about in capabilities. So this is actually the purpose of AA genproof. It's a great tool. It just yields your um, up our policy for your application, and again, you need to trigger everything in order to get the full profile of your application. And once you do, you can use it by uh, running Docker Run, Security Opt, Up Armor, and then your profile. All right, so fourth one, uh, let's talk about C groups. So C groups also a Linux kernel feature. It allows you to allocate, limit, and prioritize resource resources such as usage, memory, networking, GPU, and stuff like this. And basically, uh, it helps you to ensure that each container have its own fair share of resources. And security-wise, it ensures that uh, one container does not uh, exhaust all of the system. So for example, if an attacker compromises one of my containers and deploy a crypto miner over there that takes all of the CPU and memory, uh, then other containers won't be able to operate and other critical processes on the host machine also won't be able to operate because of that. So that's what C groups is uh, for, security-wise. Uh, on Docker, there is no CPU or uh, memory constraints uh, for C groups. I know that some of you may have ran uh, your containers and got out of memory exceptions. And I just want to emphasize that this is not from C groups. This is actually comes from the kernel saying that it cannot execute uh, some vital processes. So it just kills your container uh, and free some memory. OK, let's go to a recommendation for C groups. So this one is really uh, straightforward. Uh, the recommendation is to set limits according to the required usage, depending on your application. You all know what your application do, uh, and that's what you do. So you can do it by using uh, some flags provided by Docker. If you want to have some more uh, information, you can go and check the link down below. And here are two examples. If, for example, you want to 
limit your memory to 300 megabytes, you can do it uh, by writing memory equal 300M. And if you want to limit it to only use two CPUs, for example, you can just use the CPU's flag. OK, so last one, namespaces, and my favorite. So namespaces, also Linux kernel feature um, that provide processes with their own system view. So basically, namespaces are the, the essence, the feature that allow the isolation in containers. And as you can see, there are a lot of namespaces. And let me explain what actually uh, names, what is actually namespace. So for example, let's take the, the net namespace. So the net namespace is, net, is a namespace for uh, network interfaces. And that actually means that if I have a container with a net space, namespace A, net namespace A, and I have container in net, net namespace B, then one can have a network interface, and the other can have another network interface. Uh, but when you look inside your environment, each container won't be able to see the other one. It doesn't, they couldn't see the other network interface. So that's created isolation. And if we talk about PID namespace, it's actually for processes. So if I have one container here and one container on another namespace, then if they run stuff like uh, PS, they won't be able to see the processes on other containers. And that's, uh, that's the basic for the isolation. Other than both of them, we have the IPC namespace, which is for uh, inter-process communications, stuff like semaphores. We have the MNT namespace, which is for mounts. We have the UTS namespace, which is for uh, users, sorry, for host name and for uh, domains. And we have the user namespace, which is for users. Now let's talk about the Docker default namespaces. So when you start a container, in Docker, the container engine uh, will start the container, and it will create uh, five namespaces, PID, NET, IPC, MNT, and UTS, for your container, and then uh, will move your container into those namespaces. So each container uh, actually run in different five namespaces by default, uh, and that's why containers can see each other. Now you might, uh, you might see that one namespace is not over here, which is the user namespace. And the reason uh, the user namespace is not used by default in Docker because uh, this one is kind of tricky. Uh, it's a, an advanced, more advanced feature. And it was, could cause some complications when running containers because when you run inside another user namespace, you, you'll see yourself as root, but you won't actually be root. So for example, if I have a mount on my container uh, and there are some files over there that runs that need a root, root permission in, and I'll try to read them, then although I'm, I'm root on my namespace, I won't be able to access those files because I'm not actually root. Uh, so that's the issue, one of the issues over there. Now let's talk about the recommendations. Uh, so the recommendation, Docker did a great job. And the recommendation, recommendation is just to run uh, your containers with a default setup. It works great. Uh, if you need to run your, your container with some namespaces with the host, uh, I can figure, can't figure why you should do it. Uh, but I would recommend just to avoid it. Don't do it. Just use it, the default setup. Uh, all right. And so let's go to the better practice. Um, so the better practice, as you might imagine, will be to run uh, with user namespace, with user namespace. Uh, if you want to know how to do so, you can check the link down below. And before you're doing so, uh, I would uh, ask you to make sure that everything works uh, before put it in production, because sometimes it can cause some issues. It is a great feature, uh, but it could it could cause some issues, and uh, environments can just um, go down on this one. So let's go to the takeaways, um, the thing, things I want you to take from this talk. So the first one is that some containers need more privileges. It happens, and they need to do so, and it's OK. But if you run them in, as privileged, there is a, a big risk over there, because they can just, if they get compromised, attackers would be able to, um, to escape and compromise other parts of your environment. 
So in order to grant your container the relevant privilege without running it as, priv as privileged container, you should just configure strict security policies for all of those layers that we talked about. They grant the minimum required privilege privileges uh, and in this way, you'll re reduce the risk in case the container is compromised. Now, some more practical advices for developers who publish their applications uh, as containerized applications. Uh, you should, the, the advice is to uh, profile your application, add a sec comp, and up our profiles to your repo so that uh, your customers, your clients, will be able to use those profiles instead of running your, your container as privileged. And if you are uh, running your applications as Docker, then you should provide a full detailed command line that uses all of the policies we talked about, including the SecComp and AppArmor profiles. Uh, and if you're using Kubernetes, you should modify your uh, YAML in order for you to enforce all of those policies and just add an add them to your repo so that customers and clients would be able to uh, use those configuration in a simple and easy way. And that's about it. So I want to thank you all for coming to this session. Uh, you can find me on this email and on LinkedIn. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to reply. <laughs> Thanks. All right, thank you everyone.